Professor Deborah McNamara. I'm a consultant general and colorectal surgeon at Beaumont Hospital and I'm on the council of RCSI. Um, so the work that we've done at RCSI has shown a number of different barriers. Um, the first is a societal barrier in that even school children, when they think of a surgeon, often don't think of a woman as being a surgeon. And so that expectation can be quite uh, difficult to overcome. And that translates into lots of medical students perhaps not considering surgery as a career and almost ruling themselves out of the profession. Um, for those who do begin surgical training, um, the training is long and onerous. Um, it happens at a time of life when many people are considering having in a family and so it can be quite difficult for individuals uh, to pursue uh, a full uh, career and also um, pursue a family life. Um, surgery is just the most amazing profession. Um, it gives you a really immediate way of um, meeting patients uh, identifying problems and making a direct impact on their day-to-day -day quality of life and long-term survival based on what you do. So I, um, it's unlike many other professions in that often it, it can be a much slower process uh, to see the impact of your work. And I think one of the most exciting things about surgery is that uh, you um, have the opportunity to really make a visible direct impact on a patient's life. Um, and I think that's an extremely gratifying uh, and makes the profession uh, something that I think just is uh, really unique. So there's a big difference, I guess, in the percentage of women who entered the field of surgery compared to other areas of healthcare. Um, RCSI developed a working group uh, that generated a report called the Progress Report. And, and um, that was in response to um, identifying that while in 2014, 46% of new entrants to surgery um, into the core surgical training programs uh, were women. Um, in fact, by 2017, that had dropped to 27%. Um, so it's really unexpected that we would have such a small participation in surgical training by women surgeons, um, particularly given that for more than three decades, more than 50% of medical graduates have been women. Um, if you compare it to other professions, uh, for example, general practice, um, other medical professions, um, there's a huge difference with only about, um, in current data, about 11% of consultant surgeons being a woman at the present time. Um, and obviously, um, it's hard to understand why that might be the case. Um, and it's something that uh, we think can be improved. Progress report uh, looked throughout the career journey of a surgeon and identified a number of time points that were really important. And we worked to improve accessibility of the profession to women at each of these time points. So uh, for medical students, uh, we've tried to create greater visibility of the possibilities of surgical careers. So we do career nights for medical students. Um, RCSI um, have a surgical society that runs boot camps uh, to let people try out surgery and and see if it's for them. For core surgical trainees, we've looked at all of our policies and procedures to make sure that they're accessible to both men and women surgeons. Um, for higher surgical trainees, we've introduced a mentoring program so that we can provide additional supports to all of our trainees. Obviously, some of our women trainees have particular um, mentoring needs, but men need mentoring too. And one of the nice things about the progress report is that it's actually helped us to improve the training uh, scheme for all of our trainees. Uh, one of the exciting things that we've developed is a dedicated post CCST fellowship, um, which is additional funding that's available to a woman surgeon to um, pursue a specialty area of interest internationally. Um, uh, we'll be shortly launching our third one. And the, um, the individuals that have won it so far really are, you know, stellar individuals who have received really unique opportunities to train abroad in a subspecialty area of surgery. So 
RCSI have been really committed to increasing participation of women in the profession of surgery and has done this through lots of ways. I think it's made some really visible, important moves. So, for example, the Women on Walls project in RCSI is a highly visible means of valuing women in our profession. Um, and I think that sends a really big message to a medical student uh, who's walking through the corridors in RCSI, sees images of successful women surgeons over the decades. And I think that's a really um, positive gesture. Um, it, it also offers an opportunity for um, surgical fellows across the country, men and women, to uh, give lectures, to contribute to research uh, and to participate in surgical training. Um, so RCSI has demonstrated in very many ways its commitment to increasing the participation of women in surgery. So recruitment and retention of surgeons is a really challenging area. Surgery is an onerous profession and the training is long, um, working hours are long and it's a demanding career, particularly in a COVID era where there are many challenges in healthcare. So it's really important that it, surgery remains a profession that's attractive to men and to women. I suppose specifically from the perspective of women surgeons, one of the important um, areas that I think needs to be addressed is the health and well-being of women surgeons in pregnancy uh, when working. And I suppose that's an area that RCSI have published research internationally uh, demonstrating concerns of our trainees for their health and well-being during pregnancy. Um, and obviously it's really important that any surgeon can uh, live a full life and can enjoy a normal family life just like every other member of society so ensuring that the surgical environment is a safe and welcoming place for people who choose to have children uh, I think is a really important initiative that needs to be undertaken. <laughs>